Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Paranormal Living with me, your host, Jared Warren. So I have a very, very exciting episode for you all today. We have a brand new co-host in the Paranormal Living team and of course he is a brand new member of our live investigation team as well. It is of course Mr. Robert Dyer who I'll be interviewing very, very soon. He's going to tell you about all his experiences, how he became into the paranormal world. He is, of course, a paranormal investigator himself and absolute lives and breathes everything paranormal. So I can't wait to for him to share his story with you. But just before we do get into it, don't forget everybody to like our social medias and YouTube, of course, Paranormal Living on Facebook, Paranormal Living TV on YouTube. But all the links to all the social medias, email address, He's in the description below, so do uh, check us out, and I'm going to tell you a little bit later on about this competition, which we are running on our Facebook page, which I'm really excited to tell you all about as well. And finally, everyone, don't forget we are sponsored by Paranormal Technology, Paratech, who are based in Northern Ireland. You're not just buying equipment, you're buying an experience. So many of you have seen the lives, we do get all our equipment from Mark at Paranormal Technology. His equipment is absolutely fantastic, everybody. He's reasonably priced and he will look after you. So he is doing a deal with everyone at Paranormal Living. So if you go to our socials, like the page, and then show him that you have liked our Facebook page, he will give you 10% off your first order. So absolute win-win. So do go check him out, everybody. Paranormal Technology, Paratech, and he will look after you. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Robert Dyer, a.k.a. Bob Dyer, uh, to the team. As I mentioned, he is a paranormal enthusiast and paranormal investigator, now the newest member of the team. Of course, I have known Bob for a long, long time now, eight years. He is my father-in-law, so it makes sense I've known him that long. <laughs> Bob, the first question for you this evening, what was it what stemmed your interest into the world of the paranormal? I think it stems back to when I was like, uh, I was very young. And uh, basically my experience was uh, me uncle, he always he invited he always invites us to Abingdon to uh, you know for dinner and stuff like that. And what you have to do basically is just go in there. Yeah, they do cook your dinner. You put your dinner up. You have to take it into the living room because there's no seating downstairs. So as I'm going upstairs, I'm sort of like uh, seeing some shadow part go past me, not thinking what it is. I because I didn't understand it at that age, and also with a cold shiver, right. which then I put it to my mother, asked her what what was going on there. And the uh, uncle sort of like piped up and said, look, we, we've got power activity, we've got ghosts and stuff like that. I didn't know what ghosts were. You know what I mean? And then I was obviously was speaking to my other cousin and uh, she was telling me, uh, yeah, they've got a lot of activity going on. And uh, I, I said, well, what sort of activity? And she was explaining to me that she walks into her bedroom and uh, love and behold, believe it or not, there was a girl sitting there brushing her hair. Which she ran out, and I said to her, "You sure? Are you tell it." She says, "Yeah, it's true." And then uh, I spoke to my uncle Bernard, and uh, he was also telling me that they heard um, chairs moving about upstairs and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It was a very interesting thing, but it was very scary for uh, the, my age. I was very yeah. young at that time, so I was quite scared as well. But I thought it would end there. Obviously, it didn't because me uh, mum's other brother. Eric, he's uh, sorry, uh, Arthur, not my mum's, my dad's. Arthur, he's basically uh, lived on a farm and he invited us over there in uh, Meet and Keynes to, you know, stay with him for a few days. Mm -hmm. And we had activity going on there as well. All of us were sat around playing Monopoly, you know, just knowing, and the door come slam, you know, what opened. Thought no one got it, thought it could be the wind. And then uh, we just got a glimpse of something shooting past the kitchen door, going into the wall, which was very strange, which we all got scared and ran out the house. <laughs> and we just wouldn't go back in until they turn, come back, come back home. And wow. uh, we were very scared. So I've experienced it quite often when I went yeah. to these places. So I, that's where my interest started, because I believe there's more out there than people realise, you know, it needs investigating, it needs people to get the concrete evidence to prove that we're not just alone in this world and there's other things out there that people do not understand so obviously you mentioned then about your what stemmed your interest in your first experiences within the paranormal did you ever find out who it was at both of these locations or who it was haunting well basically I, 
when I spoke, when I spoke to one of Bernard, he, he was saying to me that it, they used to have a school. It was like a, I can I say, it was like a boarding school for girls, mm. I think it was. Yeah. And he said yeah, they turned it into obviously a shop and obviously living area and all that sort of thing previous. So obviously, yeah, I mean, I'm just going by what he said, especially with the chairs moving. You could hear them moving across the floor when you were downstairs and things like that. It was quite an experience. I mean, as, as for Uncle Harper, I'm not too sure why that situation like that, because it could have been just somebody uh, passing through in another dimension. This is this is what I think. But every time we went there, we did feel eerie things going on. It was like doors opening, creaking on the floor, footsteps, stuff like that, running upstairs, downstairs, things like that. But like I say, we never, I never really found out what it actually was, because after a while we just stopped going. But you know, I mean, it was it was like very scary when you were a young person and you at that age and you just think, well, I'm scared. I don't want to be doing this. You know what I mean? But then, as you get older, you start thinking, uh, perhaps there is something out there. Perhaps it's just somebody telling us that we need to communicate with them or whatever. You know what I mean? And the best way to do it is be a paranormal investigator. Yeah. And obviously, I watch it, a lot of YouTube stuff now as well. <laughs> there you go. It is, it is amazing because I think these experiences, like every one of the listeners and, you know, people who's had on the show as well, who we've interviewed, is these experiences what that live with you for your life and you remember yeah, them as exactly. clear as day. It's absolutely, absolutely awesome. So the house you do live in now, yeah. um, I know you've had quite a few experiences yourself. Oh, yes. And I have obviously used to live there for a short while and it, there is a crazy vibe about that house. But there's a lot of energy going on there. I don't know if it's just because quite a few people have lived there as such, or obviously. I think it's a good. I think it's a good hand. energy. I think it's mm -hmm. a good energy. I was going to say you had um, some of us. I was say yeah. I mean, I get activity quite often. I get doors opening and stuff like. I get breezing. I'm mean, like be in the living room and it'd be a lovely hot day, and then I get a breeze across my legs. Yeah. Things like that. I mean, I get pictures. I get orbs. I mean, I even had. This is really sounds silly. I really had. I was doing it, but just shooting a few pictures like you know what i mean and yeah. i went into my like the kitchen area like uh sitting room area what you want to call it like and i actually caught a hand actually on top of the framework of the door wow. a full hand and i always get like i mean i've done one was it a few weeks ago could be a bit longer and i was just taking random pictures only because i uh I think it was to do with something was on the phone. I think a, a song came out on the phone, which I didn't even put on, you know what I mean? Because I had my, like, uh, speaker rigged up to it. I didn't yeah. even put it on, and I thought, well, that's a bit strange. So I thought, well, I'll just take a random photo. And I took a couple of photos, and I caught that thing. It was like it was looking around at me as if to say, I'm here. And it was really You could see the teeth. You could see the expression in the eyes. Everything it was mad. It was absolutely fantastic. But yeah, I've had other things and stuff like that. I've had footsteps going upstairs. I've had footsteps coming downstairs. I've heard noises. I've heard quite a lot going on in here. But I think it's it's good. I think it's just that, trying to send a message that we're out there. Just acknowledge what we're, we're out there. You know, and yeah. we can try and communicate with you. We can try and get something going here. It's, it's mental. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Do you think, obviously, when you mentioned about like the mist on the city... Which obviously I've seen the picture myself, which is pretty nice. cool. Do you think it could have been the dog? Obviously, your dog who passed away, Mika. Do you reckon it could have been? It's it possible. Was in her, it was in a spot where she used to sit, weren't it, on the settee? Mm. No, well, it was. It was where I was sat on the end of the sofa, and it was just there. It was like it was just looking round at me. It was yeah. mad. I know. I've also had, um, you know, well, you know when you like you turn around quick or you see it at the corner of your eye, you think there's a dog there, and it's not. Yeah, I yeah. think it's Mika sometimes, you know what I mean? And I think, oh, wow, hang on. Toys over there, what's this? It's yeah. crazy, absolutely mental. I can be in the kitchen, right? And I feel an ear and sit there as well. Like, yeah. there's a dog behind me, a little, t -t -t -t, you know. Yeah. I look around because I think it's Ty, and it's not. It's mental. <laughs> wow. That's absolutely cool. crazy. It really is like, crazy. It, there is a lot of experience, isn't there, from people who've lost pets as well? And saying that they still feel the dog around them, they might oh, feel yeah, the tail or just a brush past them with their small dog of where the dog used to sit or stand near them. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I agree with that totally. I mean, I've looked over at that side, you know, it's dark in that area, 
Yeah. And I'm sure we've seen the outline of, you know, of Mika there. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. It, mad. Absolutely mental. I think, I think as well, it's lovely as well isn't it, to think that your pets are still coming back to oh, see yeah. you. And, you know, just being oh, a part I don't think pets ever leave you anyway. You know what I mean? I think they're there. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. No, I totally agree there. Um, talking of pictures, because a lot of people who do tune into lives know you always have your camera out. You're oh, always filming. Lives as soon as we're in the car, even if we're going down a country road, the camera's out. Or yeah. as soon as we get, as soon as we get everything, you're filming. I'm off. Um, but which is which is really cool because you have, like as we mentioned, got some absolutely fantastic photos and evidence on on your camera. But you did men you mentioned to me, aren't you, before about when you went to Malta and about the uh, oh yeah, that was that was waterfall. Some, yeah, that was some experience. Like, like I said, I wasn't out there to take paranormal shoot, uh, footage or nothing. I, I was just walking in this park in Upper Gardens. In, yeah. uh, oh, well, I, I won't say anymore. And basically, I was just taking random pictures. And I'm sure, like I say, it was like a time slip, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Another different dimension, but I caught a king on a balcony. I caught knights. I caught horses. I caught like uh, on the waterfall, like electricity coming down. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's on the picture there's a soldier with um, his bride. It used to be on um, angels and ghosts. So you know, what I mean, if you, yeah. If you ever look on there, you you might find it. Yeah, that was that was basically my. Uh, experience of that really because i captured really every evidence there mm -hmm. and then you could see like uh I don't know what a time slip or a different dimension yeah but it was absolutely totally different to where i was yeah was like well, a, I rem you know what i mean yeah, yeah i remember you showing me the showing me the photos with, mm. um, and the, they're absolutely amazing like you said, mm. we're going to try and get these on the social media so people can see. Amazing. But I do remember seeing it, and it's just like, like especially the electricity mm. and the colours coming out of that waterfall is pretty oh, epic. Exactly, yeah. And there's nothing around it to make it do that. I mean, I didn't, I didn't spot that for a while, and then I looked at it, I thought, hang on, what's this? And it was yeah. like electricity, like energy releasing itself to, so this bigger picture can be established. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if we look at back at the history of it, there could have been a castle there. There could have been all the things that I see were there in that picture. But it was amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. But it's cool to think that even if, for example, like yourself, you don't have the gift of mediumship, but the stuff you have taken on camera okay. and photos, you know, is that your thing, you know, spirit photography, you know, taking these pictures and picking up these things, which you do tend to get a lot in the pictures you do get. Oh, exactly. I mean, like I said, I got, when we went to that other place, I got... Like uh, two people in the window. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, that's not that I've got that footage. I'm sure I have. I can yeah. always put that on there any time, just so you can see yeah. it. But it's uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know why. I, I, I do get it. You know what I mean? Because I don't. I think it's because I, 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 my energy is there. I've always been a paranormal enthusiast all the time. Yeah. I always feel that I've got something there, so they can approach me. You know what I mean? It's quite crazy. And when yeah. you get evidence like that, you know, to me, we just need the solid evidence. If we ever get the solid evidence, that'd be amazing. Absolutely amazing. And if we Definitely. can communicate with that evidence that we get, it'd be fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, brilliant. yeah but I believe that, yeah. I mean, I think I've got something there, but I just think I can just take pictures and I can get things because yeah. I, I'm such a believer and I believe there's more out there than that needs to be found. Yeah. Well, that goes to one of the questions I do have for you was about teamwork and about how a team gels. Oh, and yeah. like going to Gawthorpe Hall, which we did near Burnley, what, two weeks ago now? Like, obviously, that was Denise's first investigation with us after obviously being unwell. So, shout out to our medium, Denise. But stuff she picked up on. And then oh, obviously, yeah, I picked up on stuff amazing. like a lot of, like the listeners know, obviously. Like, with myself, I do develop, you know, I'm developing as for mediumship. But even yourself, you were picking up on names. And obviously, we had all this, we had these equipment. So we had the flashing yeah. balls and the music box were going off and the torch thing were going off. And even yourself, you were picking up on stuff. Oh, and then yeah. as soon as you said, was it K, Kate or yeah. K, that ball flashed straight away, like instant, instantaneously. Oh, yeah. That, that was, 
I mean, like I say, it just coming to me head like, and I'm, I, 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 might, I might be um, communicating with them. I don't know, but like you say, you do the balls do go off. I mean, like it's, I don't know. It, I think our our bond is just so good, and I think we we feed off each other and we can translate things to each other that we. I don't know how it works, but I think if you're a, a teamwork together as one, you can get more out of your investigation than anything. You know what I mean? I think that, that it just draws itself because it knows it's your unit that it can communicate if it wishes to. That's what I feel anyway. But yeah, we do get names. We do get the, the, the cat balls move. Um, well, not, well, we, I think we have one move or something like that. But we do get them lighting up. We do get other things happening. Uh, sounds, noises, everything. It's its amazing. And I think it's because we're a unit. We're as one. That's what I think it is. And we communicate very well. That investigation we've done was a very good investigation because we got so much evidence. It was amazing. Definitely. I think for those who haven't seen it, everyone, if you go back, on, if you haven't seen it on YouTube and Facebook, it was live from Gawthorpe Hall, which was um, our second, third. It was our third live mm. on the Friday nights. And like you like like you just summed it up then the gel of the team and what we were picking up on and the stuff what was going oh, on exactly, exactly. and things going off it was absolutely amazing and the pictures Denise got with the orbs in your cell you know the pictures you've got but even going back to the week before when we did that Wally Abbey the abandoned yeah. uh, the derelict Abbey that place was absolutely freaky that was scary I, honestly everyone after twenty minutes Bob had said oh can we move <laughs> yeah, but it was it was eerie weren't it. It was very eerie because, like I said, I don't know what was going on. I just felt some sort of pressure in the area that Jared was in. And it was like coming down on me. I thought something's going to go wrong here. Something's going to happen. Maybe it, did, it didn't, obviously. But it felt like it was just pressure. If you watch the footage, you could see I'm in, out, in, out. I can't stay in that place. Mm. So I decided to go investigate on my own. Yeah. And when I went to investigate, I went to the kitchen area and... Uh, Basically, I, I felt things there, obviously. My light decided to go out at the wrong time because it was halfway down the corridor, as you call it. Had to get back. Couldn't see where I was going. That was a bit of a panic. But, yeah, we we, we done well on that one because we had the cat balls moving, uh, obviously, and we had, also had D actually lighting up and stuff of that sort of thing and that. We got noises. We got, we got quite a lot of evidence. We had all the uh, gadgets going off and stuff like that. So that was a really good investigation. Every investigation we do, we go out there and we, you know, we're here. If you want to talk to us, we're here. And we're coming yeah. back with evidence like that, but we've got really good evidence to prove that there is something going on that we need to uncover. And Definitely. the criminal living crew will do that. I really think we will get an apparition. We will communicate with that apparition and things will go our way. Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah, I love yeah, that. I I agree there because I think again it comes back to the team gelling. Obviously, having Denise with us as well, picking stuff up, and us all being in that mindset, and that's what it is about us. It's about you know getting that evidence that there is life after death. Spirit are around us. You know these places do have energy holding there, and like you say, you felt the pressure as I felt quite relaxed. Apart from I was a bit alarmed when I picked up on about a gentleman walking around, and I could see his face mm. clear. As day. And when we went into the kitchen, that's when I did get a bit spooked. Yeah, because it was a bit. constantly noises around you of footsteps, and there's no one walking. Like you say, exactly. it's nearly midnight at this point, and there's just it constant noise. And yeah, it was <clears throat> really, really freaky and eerie. But again, what an amazing investigation it was. And, you know, that was your third one with us. Oh, yeah, because we have all the equipment going off and all that. That was a bit of a, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm mean, not going to put a gadget on by the window, and I just walked away and it going on. The thing with us as well, we always try to debunk everything. So if something does go off and one of us may have moved, we will move back to that or we'll fling exactly. our arms around. We will try and debunk it. And then if we can't, it's open to what everyone's thoughts are. Well, exactly. Just, I mean, we, we go out there and we go out to prove it. If it is the case, if it's not the case, yeah. we will prove otherwise. Simple. And, and as well, it comes down to when we're getting instant responses. I think that's... As we mentioned about Gothop, you mentioned in that name and mm. us picking stuff up. And I think I mentioned about a little boy, and boom, it's flashing. Exactly. And then Denise, then Denise is picking up names and what how it all works. And also, not to mention a big shout out to Carl, who is a new member of the crew. Oh, yes. Great guy. 
Love lots. We will get him on the uh, we will get him on the podcast at some point, but he will be live with us on Tuesday night. But uh, yeah, it's it's all sort of just gelling now. It's all getting into fruition and what I perceived when I originally came up with this idea back in April last year, you know, and then obviously starting with Jay. Now Jay's unfortunately left, and you know, we've got to keep going. The team has changed a bit, we but we're absolutely great fit with each other, and I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. And we're so glad to have you on board as well. Oh, love it. Love it. I, I wouldn't want to do anything else. I love it. That's been <laughs> fantastic. So, out of the experience we've had so far, and obviously we've got so much planned going forward and some more recording as well. You know, how how are you feeling now? Are you excited for the future? Are you excited for what holds in oh, front definitely. of us? Definitely. I'm enjoying every moment of it. All my life, right? Obviously, when I was uh, an age to understand, yeah. I've always. I've always been into paranormal and I've always wanted to be a paranormal investigator because I think I could bring a lot to the table. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I think I can get evidence. I think I, I can be, they can communicate with me, like whatever. You know what I mean? I think I've got that to do and I think I can mm-hmm. achieve that. I really yeah. do. Uh, I enjoy it. I love doing it. I love the investigations we go on and yeah, it gets a bit eerie sometimes, but, if you if you're not eerie, then you're not you're not conquering anything, are you? You know what I mean. Yeah. You've got to conquer the uh, darkness and stuff like that. But yeah, brilliant. I'm loving it. Really I think awesome. that's it. I think certain certain times in your life you get callings for things, and you know the fact that you've done investigations in the past and to where you are now, and you know, and I do totally agree with you. You have brought something completely different to the table for us. Exactly. And yeah, you've exactly. brought like a bit of a freshness for us, to be honest. Mm. It's like if we ever achieved anything and we ever really got the evidence, I think it pe- make people understand a bit more that there's more out there than we really think. Yeah, and I totally. think people appreciate what we do anyway because we give them what, what you know, what we what they want to know or whatever they want to find out or any mm. information. If they ever, if you ever ever got any, they got any questions out there and need to speak to you, they can do it or they can speak to anybody on the team. And just yeah, ask anything, yeah. random questions. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's one thing I like about what we're doing as well. Um, you know, as I mentioned, guys, uh, you know, get us on Facebook at Paranormal Living. With what you were saying then about the messages, like, receive so many messages on exactly. the page and people asking for advice. You know, we always try and give the best advice we physically can. Uh, you know, I, someone sent me some pictures and then I end up linking in and giving a, like a little message kind of thing. And... You know, I, that's what I love. I love the interaction. And, you know, like you say, if you would like to come on the podcast, you know, just send us a message, share your story, share your experiences with us, you know, and that's what we're here for. And, you know, I love, like you say, the fact that we've had Richard Felix on uh, on the last episode. What a which, great guy. Oh, he was, and he was the nicest man. He was absolutely lovely. You know, interviewing Stephen Mercer, who does the Blackpool Ghost Walks, we had Denise, of course, um, Andrea Perrin from The Conjuring. All these different people and all these experiences all had. It's been absolutely amazing. And, you know, that's what that's what I love about our show and what we're doing is... Any, any pictures you've got, anything or any stories that you've come across or you've heard or you know about or you've um, experienced, just give us a bow. And, we, we, you know, we, we, we'd love to know all about this sort of twitching. And we most probably put you on, on, on live when we go on live or something like that. You know what I mean? So just before we do come to the end of this week's episode, don't forget, everybody, we will be live on Friday night, 9 p.m. GMT time from our mysterious location, which has now become a regular episodic weekly thing. Um, we've been to some absolutely amazing locations and got some amazing evidence over the course of these last investigations. If you haven't seen any of the previous ones, they are live on YouTube and, of course, on the Facebook page, so you can check them out there and see what we've been up to and where we've been. And don't forget, everybody, we are sponsored by Paranormal Technology Paratech, who are, of course, based in Northern Ireland. As I mentioned, Mark will give you 10% off with your first purchase as long as you have liked our page. So absolute win-win. And as I mentioned, the equipment is amazing. and We use it in every investigation. And you will see it all this weekend, of course, as well. So, Bob, again, thank you very much for coming on the podcast this week. You're and welcome, mate. So everyone has finally heard your actual story. Uh, rather than just seeing your face as such. <laughs> no, no, but it's been amazing. I, I like to put it out there anyway, like so people understand that I'm not I'm not just a sceptic because I'm not a sceptic. I'm out there and I'm out there 
because I believe in what there's out there. There's more out there yeah. people realise. Thank you very much for tuning in this week, everybody. Take care. God bless. All the best. Love and light. Adios.